we've moved into Pluto in the sign of Aquarius, which it will remain for 19 years. The last time that it was in the sign of Aquarius was, I think, 1778, which should ring a bell for some of us because America, America, America. was America. America was established un- under Pluto in Aquarius. Mm. So America is having its Pluto return. Mm. Wow! Right? Okay. Right. So what is that? What Woo! Is that mean? You ready? Yeah. If Pluto was in Aquarius in 1778 and the United States was founded in 1776, it was at the very end of Capricorn, just like we've been in these last mm-hmm. 15 years, but more importantly, these last few years. Okay. Yeah. So the establishment of a country. That's there's Capricorn right there. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to The Medicine Podcast. This is Mimi and I have my love, Chase, next to me here. It's May 27th. (laughs) Is it? Yeah, it's my birthday. Love it. I love it. So we are literally on our way back from Greece right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you guys have tuned into our incredible journey and hopefully it's incredible. I'm manifesting it right now in this moment. We are pre-recording these intros, everybody. But (laughs) uh, that is not what this is about. This is about wrapping up our astrology series. This is episode four of four. If this is the first time you're jumping into the series, you should go back a few episodes. Um, I believe it was May 6th is part one where we reintroduce astrology. Uh, We did episode two. That is the initial sun signs of the zodiac. Uh, walking us through March 21st through September 22nd of the year. And if you are born in that time frame, or you know somebody who was born in that time frame, it will be wildly informative for you. Episode three was the latter six signs of the Zodiac. That is September 23rd through March 20th. Again, same applicability in your life. It'll completely blow your mind how wildly resonating all of these signs are, even if they are not yours. Mm -hmm. And this episode four today is zooming out a little bit. Okay, we've digested a lot over the last three weeks on the micro level. This is about us. This is about who we are. These are about our relationships, about our working lives, about our spiritual lives. But astrology is even deeper than that. Mm -hmm. It actually impacts the macro Mm -hmm. as well, the universal, the cosmic. And uh, what can we learn about humanity, about these times that we're in, and about the knowledge that we can see or or understand through astrology that can support the macro experience of our mm-hmm. lives. Yeah, it's like okay, that was a lot of information. Great. What do we do with it now? How do we how do we change? How do we grow? How do we evolve as a humanity learning more about ourselves and each other and these archetypes that flow through the cosmos and the fabric of reality. So we are zooming out and looking at this particular time in in uh, in humanity in in our history. Like what is going on and why is this specific time important and how can we all lean in to you know create a more beautiful world so that's what we're doing in this episode the fourth and final episode of this four-part series we hope you guys love it if you do please share on instagram or social media wherever you like um you can find us there i am at mimi underscore the medicine um and our podcast is at the underscore medicine you can search my name, Chase Ramey, on Instagram. My handle is at the underscore Chasen underscore one. And more importantly, give some love to our dear teacher and mm-hmm. friend and mentor, Adrian Abeta. You can find her at her website, adrianabeta.com. She's got a ton of information. She's got online courses. You can work with her directly, which we highly yeah. encourage people to do so. Um, and follow her on social. She is incredible on social media, giving out just wild information for mm-hmm. completely free. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we'll have all of this information, all of these notes um, in the show notes. And uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us this entire month mm-hmm. on our astrology series. If you want to hear more series like this yeah. or particular topics, um, please let us know. Give yeah. us the feedback. We would love to do this kind of thing more. And I hope that we go back to another beautiful destination for a month so that we have an excuse <laughs> to do another series like this. But uh, without further ado... Sending gratitude to everybody who's been listening and or watching and or sharing. This is episode four, the final episode of our astrology series. Enjoy. Welcome back to the fourth and final episode of our astrology series. What a journey we have been on. We we spent the first episode recapping on astrology. Let's just call it Astrology 101. 
we defined some terms. We went through uh, what is a sun sign, what is a moon sign, what is our ascending or rising. Um, we defined the seasons. Uh, we talked through the houses, and then we shed some light on personal planets and how all of these uh, in symphony and in uh, you know cooperation with one another manifest into who we are and this you know crazy journey that we're on we spent episodes two and three walking through each one of the signs of the zodiac uh, with a general framework of hey what are some of the general strengths weaknesses of these signs what are some you know misunderstood or underrated characteristics or qualities of these signs and having given examples for famous people as well as you know folks that we might know in our own lives to anchor in some level of context and some level of relatability for each one of these to bring us to this point where we are at now, and that is to ask once again to Adrian, our expert guest and uh, fairy godmother, why did we do this? Why is this important? How can we use this information? That is a wonderful question that people should ask when they come and get a reading, right? Because <laughs> it frames everything, you know, mm -hmm. it frames the human experience. This is the existential question that guides us forward. And so why did we do this? Well, because we're us. But I think, you know, we did this as a way of helping other people understand and accept their wholeness, all of them. We also did this, I think, because we love the language of astrology and we understand how um, how nuanced it is and how inclusive it is, that each of these signs is an archetype. It's not a prescription, so to speak. And I think that we, um, we really did this to to help to help others help others mm -hmm. because that's yeah. why we're here. We're yeah. all here to help each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfectly put. Oh, well, it's a great way to put it. And, and if we can help ourselves, we are indirectly helping others. And mm -hmm. and if we can get to the place where we feel like we can at least get our heads a little bit above water, we may be able to like directly help somebody else with this information. And I, well. I, you know, I think it's important just to highlight at the beginning here when we're, we're zooming out now and we're looking at like, okay, why does this matter? Why are we digging into this? Why did we make this whole series? Um, relationships is such a, a core pillar of the medicine podcast. And, you know, our experience in life is all about relationships. You said this in the first episode, Re astrology is complex. There's so many layers because it's all about relationships and there's really never ending relationships between different aspects of us and <laughs> the planets and the stars. And so I think that this is, you know, maybe goes without saying, but Chase and I have not engaged in any therapy that has been more impactful than understanding our natal charts and each other's with a professional. And, you know, maybe not someone who just went through a weekend course online and calls himself an astrologer. I think that's great. You have to start somewhere and you have to get clients somewhere somehow. But someone like yourself that has 23 years of experience, mm -hmm. it's different. It's not just talking about when we come to see you, it's not, we're not sitting there talking about the stars and the planets the whole time. Yes, they're mentioned, but it is a therapy session. I've said this before, you are our therapist, right? And our relationship is one that requires, and every relationship is this way, it requires an understanding of the innate aspects of your partner and what is baked into them and how you might complement each other or oppose each other. And I cannot speak highly enough of this as a therapy modality within relationship. So if you've been following this journey, hopefully you've listened to the previous three episodes in this series. And if, if you have felt the nudge to um, to have a, a, a reading done, whether it's you just solo or with your partner, if you're in relationship, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I cannot recommend anyone higher than Adrian for this. You will never regret your relationship will only improve with yourself or your partner um, when you understand these aspects um, and you can dive into the deeper layers of why things are the way that they are. Um, so I just wanted to plug that right off the bat for you. Um, you've just been an absolute angel in our life. And um, yeah, 
just one of our most treasured mentors, therapists, friends. Yeah, I could go on and on. <laughs> you did. Thank you. Yeah. I'm beaming over here. Mm -hmm. I think I love what you said, though. And um, I think this is where um, my work is evolving. And uh, the when I first started doing this, it was really about like helping people fix themselves. I'm a Virgo. We talked about that in the last episode, like or the one before. Virgos like to fix. And, and therapy is a paradigm that is very much um, bound up in fixing what's wrong. Mm. And in that fixing of what's wrong, there's a huge emphasis on what's wrong. And we have become accustomed to cutting out what's wrong, to hiding what's wrong, right? To glamorizing what's wrong. And so I, I think that now my, my mission with this is not so much to help people fix themselves or not to be so much um, a therapy, uh, uh, this to be about therapy, about fixing, but it's more about the adventure. Mm -hmm. like an I, exploration. An exploration. And I think yeah. that, you you know, instead, of, I want you to refer to me instead of your therapist moving forward as your adventure guide. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. that. Okay? Yeah. I am the adventure guide right. through, you know, who it. you are. And with that, there's more emphasis on how to create wholeness and alignment within yourself rather than continuing to perpetuate mm -hmm. an illusion that there's something wrong with you. Right, right. I love that. And adventure is therapeutic. It absolutely it is. is. It is the medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, adventure tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> yes. love it from here on out in this little cup I have my favorite way to enjoy mushy love which is in combination with cold milk we drink raw cow's milk and I put it uh, about 8 ounces of milk in with about a scoop and a half of mushy love that combination like the cold version of mushy love tastes like liquid graham crackers like I shit you not if you don't know yet what mushy love is it's our mushroom elixir with 500 milligrams of chaga which is amazing for gut support they call it the king of mushrooms and then 500 milligrams as well of tremella mushroom which is the beauty mushroom and she is most known for holding 500 times her weight in water the more hydrated we are the more plump and dewy and fresh and young our skin looks mm, plump and dewy <laughs> For Mushy Love, go to getmushylove.com and you can use the code MEDICINE for a nice little discount that we only give to our Medicine Podcast listeners. One of the things that, that I wanted to make sure we address or talk about is a common, you know, criticism, maybe just a, a level of feedback that you might get as it pertains to astrology. And it's this statement. Well, I can look at a host of these different signs and they're so general that they can at least 70% relate to me. As such, how do I know that this is a real prescription for me and my life um, versus just making me feel seen and validated through parlor tricks? How do you usually respond to a comment like that? Uh, let's see. These days I probably just smile. Um, <laughs> but, um, well, I, I would say that first of all, that there is relevance in that. I mean, what we're talking about here are 12 different archetypes and, you know, that's not like hundreds, that's 12. And in the, uh, long span of our life and all of the many experiences, we experience all of this. So of course we are going to be able to relate to something more than, um, than just our sun sign. But I think that what is really important in this is how do you, how do you resonate with it? Right. And so if we're talking to somebody that's a Leo and they may resonate with part of that, but the part that they don't resonate with is then that's my, um, that's my art is to be able to draw the connections between what isn't feeling expressed and what is expressed. The other way that I want to answer that is that there's something that's called the Barnumum effect, like Barnum and Bailey Circus. Okay. And this was something, it's exactly what you're saying. It's a parlor trick. And how just with enough information about a person, you can begin mm -hmm. to create a profile of that person. Mm -hmm. Well, astrology is really similar, but that doesn't make astrology nefarious, right? right. Astro astrology is a system. And when people say, 
say, you know, that they don't believe in it, I say, well, you don't have to believe in gravity, but it still works all the same, all right? So it, it, th- those comments that are um, ignorant, which just mean that they lack any knowledge, they don't offend me anymore. It's more of an opportunity for, let me just show you. Right. Right. So, Mm -hmm. you know, so I, I don't have time for people that don't want to know. (laughs) Right. You're not out here trying to convince anybody. No, not anymore. Not anymore. One of the things that comes up for me in response to that question and and having uh, experienced some level of, you know, enlightenment as it pertains to the depth of astrology is that, like you said, there are so many components to one's chart that you could very easily have these influences from, let's see, fuck, like eight (laughs) out of the 12 maybe show up in your chart. And so, of course, when you read the general characteristics of some of these signs, you're going to be like, wow, that's familiar or that resonates. And how it shows up is is where, you know, something like a session or really studying um, this system allows you to see the specificity with which it applies to your life and it can get a little less general you've got to be general if you're trying to educate yeah Uh, and and so as we as we have done in these prior three episodes um unveiled a little bit of the uh, corners by which these different signs can show up for you in your life where they may be more dominant where they may be more of just an accessory um, or way where they may not be relevant at all and then the other thing i'll say is that we as human beings can really convince ourselves that we are something that we're not. <laughs> and every male, every traditional male who has some level of masculinity within them will watch a, a Sylvester Stallone movie and they'll go, that's me. <laughs> and they'll be like, wow, well, I'm that, that guy. Well, okay. I'm, the, I'm the hero. I'm the hero. Or Indiana Jones. Okay. Uh, that would be me. Okay. Yeah. If, I, if I had all those opportunities, I'd be Indiana Jones. We project... <laughs> what we want ourselves to look like and feel like. But you bring up a really good point there that actually answers, you know, the question that you asked, which is, so you are projecting your masculinity into the hero's journey, into the hero, but what kind of hero? So if I was sitting down with you and, you know, that would be a huge Leo emphasis, by the way, like, you know, this, you are the hero in your own journey and it feels, but what kind of hero will then be sort of the, the refinement, which is when we look at the rest of the planets and the signs that they're in right so i mean you answered that really well it's of course they can relate to these different energies because a a birth chart is composed of yeah 10 to 12 different astrology signs yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah And, and and you know my my point that i'd like people to consider is that we so often think of ourselves as something that we're not and even if we can play that role for a season of our life like uh, I think it's the Sagittarius that, to me, is so compelling. I love that adventurous individual spontaneous, and yeah. that spontaneous individual. And I can be that, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. But that is not where I am innately resting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so while I may see some level of resonance, uh, there may also be some level of like, I wish I was this way, and Mm -hmm. I may have convinced myself that I am this way. Mm. Yeah, we're also relying on an accurate self-reflection process. Exactly. Which all of us, I mean, mean, there's always more to understand and to learn about when we're we're talking about Mm self-reflection and seeing yourself accurately. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of people out there that could read a very accurate description of uh, you know, uh, an accumulation of, of opinions or reflections from people that they love and they could read it and be like, that's not me at all. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, it just depends on like, where is your accuracy when it comes to self-reflection? Yeah. And, and have you, have you engaged mm-hmm. in voluntary self-reflection yeah. up until that point? That's a really good question too, right? Because, and, and with another, yeah. Right, that voluntary yeah. self reflection with mirror. another is yeah. a, is a big one, and it changes over time too. Yeah. You know, so to the extent that we know ourselves is is to the extent that we are also handicapped. Right, right? Mm-hmm. we can't see it all. Yeah, and you know, astrology as it is also the clock. Right, it is. It's a system of seasons. It's a it's a system of patterns, and so we ourselves are subject to these seasons. You know, the. the I am often, I, I understand it because I was that late 20 something, early 30 something that thought I was so wise because I knew all this knowledge. I had all of this at that point, but I didn't have lived experience, right? Mm. And so the wisdom, I, 
I didn't quite have the wisdom then that I do now because wisdom is earned through experience, right? So we have certain limitations that we that only maturity can give us. Right. Totally, yeah. totally. Right. And I feel like having an understanding of a system like astrology, when you have those experiences, you know where to like place it on the map. And mm-hmm. it almost seems as if it lands uh, maybe quicker than someone who accumulates experiences, doesn't necessarily know how to place it or land it and just sort of goes, that was shitty and I'm not sure what to do with it yeah. now. So I'm just going to continue to move on happen uh, like a happenstance type lifestyle. Yes. Um, so that's where I see like being able to like structure this map such that even if you haven't accumulated these experiences, when they happen, you're able to place them with some level of context, digest find some them. level of meeting and digest or metabolize Di- them. Yep. Yeah, perfectly. digest and integrate. And you're right. And that's what um, that's what I think I do really well. Yeah. I'm, I'm able to go through people's life, you know, and, and maybe in some of the ways that they didn't consider were really um, formidable experiences. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not only go through the life stream, but also put that in perspective in terms of their season of life, their personal development as well. And so the pressures that one places on themselves to, you know, be successful right at 24 because they went to college and all of those things, that doesn't line up. It doesn't line up with the seasons of maturity Mm -hmm. for those that it has. Like that's an anomaly. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So as we kind of wrap this series up and we have this closing conversation here in episode four, um, we have hopefully supplied our listeners and ourselves with a bit more of a robust uh, tool belt to be able to facilitate our own understanding, our own learning. And, uh, you know, if we are so lucky, be able to support those in our lives who may embody some of these other signs, some of these other characteristics, and we're able to navigate what we're calling sort of these these micro uh, environments um, in a more successful way, for lack of a better term, and to not get too wordy. Now, to wrap this up, we're going to zoom out a bit and talk about the the macro, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll let you speak as to what that means mm-hmm. and uh, unpack what would the application of astrology on a macro level look like. Okay. Well, let's start by saying that astrology, first and foremost, exists from a macro level, mm-hmm. right? We are born from the stars, yep. right? And so that macro level is, is similar to the template that I was giving you in terms of the seasonal changes of each of these signs. So we exist within the paradigm of these seasons. And as we exist in the paradigm of those seasons, say, for example, this winter time, for those that are pushing to try to work hard and do the hardest work, they're depleted. They're more tired and exhausted than they've ever been before, right? They're not living living in alignment with the season, so to speak. Mm. Now, equally so, if you've got, let's stay with Capricorn that is, you know, 40 years old and they haven't accomplished something yet, for them, they're living within the season that it, it, based upon their um, their development, they should have already contributed something. And so for me to be able to take the macro environment and apply it to their micro environment gives them perspective and perhaps uh, a vehicle in which to move through their life. So that's one way. When we take the macro and we apply it to the micro, we're mm-hmm. taking what's what's happening on a big scale and we're also saying that you exist within this big scale. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is remember I was referring to some of these as outer planets. Mm-hmm. Those transpersonal outer planets are Uranus and Neptune and Pluto. And those planets are not personal planets in that when somebody's looking at their Pluto and they're like, well, my Pluto's in Scorpio. And so that means, no, it doesn't mean that in particular for you. It's not personal to you. It's collective. It's Mm -hmm. universal. It depicts the time that you were born into and what the big changes, transformations that were were occurring that inform the person you are becoming. Okay, mm. so this this is the macro spot. There are these big, more um, collective forces, societal changes. We're swimming in that soup, mm-hmm. right? So when we throw around this idea of patriarchy, like if we tried to throw this around two hundred years ago, they'd laugh at us. They wouldn't even know what that was. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And because they were existing within mm-hmm. it, right? They yeah. were actually creating it at that time. But now that we've zoomed out a bit and we have other experiences, now we have a word for it that begins to separate us from 
patriarchy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And it's such an important word for where we're going to go today. It almost makes me think of like, it's like l- a cluster of generations. So you could say it's like generational, it is generational. generational flavors. Yes. Where So when we're talking about boomers versus millennials versus Gen X versus uh, versus Gen Z and beyond, I don't, I don't even know what the other ones are. Mm-hmm. Um, they all have their own like flavor. Yes. And that's how I perceive the Neptune, Uranus and Pluto. Um, because in our, in our chart, if you were born in a specific time frame, it's going to be similar to the other people that were born in that same cluster of years. Yes. Correct. So we're all going to experience the same flavors of society because we're living in the same stretch of time. Exactly. Yeah. And the impact of those outer planets is the Im- it creates the dynamic interplay with our place in humanity right now. Mm -hmm. And so we are all equipped with the necessary DNA, the coding, whatever words we want to use, the material, the raw material to both contribute to the problem and contribute to the balance of Mm -hmm. that problem. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So what, can you walk us through an example of that? Well, let's begin with, you know, why, what we're talking about today. So the the planets are moving. They're all moving at certain rates. I I mentioned to you earlier that because Mercury is so close to the sun, it's moving at a really fast rate. The moon moving the fastest. Every two and a half days, it changes signs. It's called an ingress. These outer planets, the furthest planet being um, Pluto, Pluto takes 248 years to orbit the sun. Crazy. Wow. 248 years to orbit the sun. So we're not talking about um, a generation necessarily, right? right? We're talking about like an epoch. We're talking about an era. We're talking about something really Mm -hmm. big here. But it would be moving through each of the signs every what? uh, 22 years or something. It dependent, right? An orbit defines like what that is. But yes, around like we, we are just coming out of a 15 year transit or ingress of Pluto in Capricorn. So Pluto has been in the sign of Capricorn for the last 15 years. Prior to that, it was in the sign before that for I think probably about 17 years. Okay. So it changes just a tad. We're moving, we've moved into Pluto in the sign of Aquarius, which it will remain for 19 years. The last time that it was in the sign of Aquarius was, I think, 1778, which should ring a bell for some of us because America, America, America. was, America. America was established un- under Pluto in Aquarius. Mm. So America is having its Pluto return. Mm. Wow. Right? Okay. Right? So what does that, what does that mean? You ready? Yeah. Let me just take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say this. If Pluto was in Aquarius in 1778 and the United States was founded in 1776, it was at the very end of Capricorn, just like we've been in these last Mm -hmm. 15 years, but more importantly, these last few years. Okay. So the establishment of a country, that's, there's Capricorn right there. (laughs) Power and the establishment, the structure of a society, of a land, of a place, and Mm -hmm. what that, what that required. It required a declaration of independence, right? And in that declaration of independence, it was declared Declaring its independence from a more powerful, what? England. Right. Right. From something more powerful than itself. Mm -hmm. It was declaring its independence from, you know, a top heavy religion in which it wanted to assert itself in and consequently then destroyed another spiritual, um, another spiritual system in, in in its wake. Right. Mm. And so essentially we've been in that same place that we were at the founding of America. And we know, I mean, I'm not a history buff, but we know that founding America was, you know, there was a lot of war that occurred prior to the French Revolution. We had all these revolutions, these break from um, corruption of power, the overwhelm of power. So all the things we're talking about right now are Pluto. 
Okay. Yep. Pluto is about power. Pluto is about evolution. It's about our destiny. It's about the, the evolution of the soul. So Pluto takes us down into the darkness. It dismantles all of our illusions of power so that we can become purified in an aligned sense of power. And that aligned sense of power is not in our humanity. <laughs> it's in the totality of what it means here on earth, mm. that we care about all of the inhabitants, that we don't exploit power for our own purposes. Now let's come back to the founding of America. Right. We were founded upon the exploitation mm -hmm. of others. Totally. Mm -hmm. And we grew to a super power status on the backs and the death and the subjugation, the subjugation and the race, right? Keep right. going, keep right. going. So now when Pluto, when America's having its big shadow return is what I want to say, its big Pluto return, it is required to balance itself. Sure, sure. Think about that. Over these last years, what has Pluto been breaking down? This is all uh, since 2008. We'll go back there. That's when Pluto went into the sign of Capricorn. What has just increased exponentially since 2008? I would say... Think along the lines of power, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, well, decentralization of information, yeah. for sure. Anyone and everyone has access to more information than we could ever hope for um, versus in history where a, a few have had the information and sending it out. Now everyone has information. Um, um, but that's clearly not what you're looking no, for. No, no, you're, you're going somewhere really good because it's, it's, you're right. And in the dissemination of that information, what have people done with it? Well, the information's been completely watered down. We all have avail available information. We can find whatever information we want to find. We can validate whatever the hell we want to validate because information is, is in such a surplus. Is in such a surplus. However, don't you hear everybody complaining about censorship these days? Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and not only censorship, but, you know, post-2001, there's more... Uh, you know, monitoring than ever. We all complain about our phones listening to us and our devices in our home listening to us and drones everywhere. Um, and so, yeah, uh, censoring is, is of, of, at least in my lifetime, never, mm -hmm. never been uh, more, more prevalent. I also see economic wild transition in the economy. 2008 was an economic collapse. Uh, pandemic was, you know, technically Different an economic type, collapse, yeah. but, the, but hold the, on, go back to the first collapse. Yeah, 08. 08. Yeah. Who profited from oh, that collapse? The wealthy. And and the wealthy have never been so wealthy. Yep. The middle class is deteriorated. Gone. So similar to the parallel of the foundation of America mm. that was founded yes. upon the exploitation of the vulnerable or the marginalized, we have again not learned from the Frankenstein of our monster and all of these millionaires and billionaires and trillionaires have profited off the loss of the vulnerable. Yep. Yeah. Whose houses are were the foreclosed? Yeah. They were the people that are not making the same kind of money because yep. there is an enormous disparity in wealth. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, my friend, is where Pluto in Capricorn, what Pluto does is it brings to the surface all that is disgusting, mm -hmm. right? And all that has gone putrid right. and all that is not working in service of the soul. Yeah. It reminds me when we, we go to priest every year, priest lake and every four to five years the lake completely turns over it where is. yeah it's amazing where everything from the bottom comes up to the top it stinks the water is dirty when usually the water is pristine and crystal clear and it looks like you could drink this water it's so pure but every four to five years there's a turnover and, and everyone knows who goes to priests that like oh it's a turnover year and it's stinky and gross and but 
the lake knows, nature knows, something about that is functional. It's amazing. So beautiful. What a beautiful analogy. Because that's part of this process, right? We have to go through the purge. Mm -hmm. We have to go through the death. We have to go through all of that for, in order for the transmutation as we talk sure. about, right? And that's the other part of this is, is that, uh, that much of our society on a whole, we are, we're so um, enamored by and attached to all these words, right? The structure words like healing, right? All, and, and work. And what are some of the other buzzes that I'm thinking of right now? Grind. Grind. The grind or even the, the other good ones like, oh, being a millionaire. Everybody wants to be yeah. a millionaire. <laughs> Everybody wants to be an influencer, In totally. right? Yeah. And, we, were t and mm -hmm. we criticize we criticize our situation and I feel like especially right now because there's so much up in the air as a society and as just a humanity at large, yet we're still attached to those systems. We can't help but be attached. And we are the systems. We are the systems. And like... I know that the opportunity that my parents had as a boomer generation is not the same that I have now, but I'm still attached to the things that they were able to accomplish and accumulate as if I'm going to be able to mirror that or exceed that in some way. But I'm also faced with this sense that what will be quote unquote available to me and to us mm -hmm. will be so radically different than what was available to them 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And even that unknown is a little bit unsettling. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you know, the words you're using, the radical unknown is Pluto going into Aquarius mm -hmm. and leaving the comfort and the traditional knowing and structure of Capricorn. Like these are the systems that have been put in place. And going back to what we said at the beginning, like, um, you know, uh, information just being disseminated all over the place. Yeah. It, as a result, it gets watered down, right? As a result, nobody goes to the libraries anymore, right? right? As a result, like higher education is being questioned. Question. Lower education is being questioned, right? The traditional ways in which we come into power, which is to say we come yeah. into ourself, are being challenged. And Aquarius purview is to completely, radically, um, let's say, reorganize the structure of things. But what you're pointing to is very important. We can't, we can't dismantle a system without also being dismantled in the process. Sure. Yeah, it, it feels, you know, I've, I've heard others say this, and it feels very resonant right now to this time. I, I just imagine this, this turning over effect of the, the lake, this, the lake, so to speak. But it, it seems like there's so much that's, it's like upside down world right now, where a, a metabolic disease named as obesity is now being pushed and we are supposed to encourage and uh, accept and um, see this as beautiful and just as healthy as someone who might be, you know, physically fit. And it, it seems sort of like upside down world to me versus, you know, what the medical establishment has told us is reality. And there's, this is just one example. Um, but the, it seems like there's so many other, so many examples right now where things are just completely flipping upside down. And where they're flipping upside down, to use that example, are in the establishment, in the authorities, in the government, in the institution, mm -hmm. in the big business, right. in where the wealth is, right? So all of these big systems that have told us this is what it is, and we've needed that. They're, they're moving into this upgrade. Right. And that's right. what Aquarius does is it upgrades, okay. it up levels, it recycles, it grows, it expands what what no longer is working for the people. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this is the other piece of that. What comes out of this Pluto and Capricorn also as a shadow. And we're, we're, we're tending to talk about the shadow here. I want to say that because of Pluto, it doesn't mean that it's, it's all bad, but we're going to focus first on the shadow because of Pluto. So what is also coming out of this time frame is greed. The enormous greed that wealth gives us, right? right? Especially when that wealth is accumulated on the backs of others, mm -hmm. the exploitation of others. So understand, America came into power through the relationship of 
the worker, right? Mm -hmm. We could say the slave owner right. mm -hmm. and the slave. Right. And so that slave owner and that slave not only represent, you know, a, an institution of racism, but they also represent an institute, a relationship that we ourselves have agreed upon. Right. Mm -hmm. The workday week. Right. Yeah. So again, when I say again, this patriarchy, the patriarchy is this establishment of the rules that are best for not the people, right. mm -hmm. but the one and the ones in power. It's yeah. a it's a less for you is more for me. Yes. And it always has been. And even though we've we've reshuffled the deck a few times, it's the same deck and it's the same amount of cards. And we might create, you know, a technology that kind of continues to outpace uh, the current deterioration of economies and, and environments um, because we create a new bright and shiny object that gives us, let's say, another 10 years of life before we find ourselves in some sort of collective crisis such that we need to invent something else. You know, this has been every, starting from the Industrial Revolution all the way to smartphones, social media, and now artificial intelligence. We, we kick the can down the road with the latest invention, but it's just like, at what point are we not going to be able to sort of like outpace this this scarcity way of living? And I think we're getting to this point where yeah. we've just, there's so many people sick, poor, um, confused, that it, it's regardless of what comes out from a technological standpoint, we may not be able to outpace this problem. Yeah, and and I think it's the the um, the energy behind the outpacing. It's the energy of striving, right? There's Capricorn. Yep. It's the energy in the hustle. It's the energy that you know the means don't justify the ends. Like, and and so now this radical change that you're talking about, right? This is what is promised in the sign of Aquarius, but in the same with the same fairness and and you know, being scrutable to like what the negative, what the shadow side of Aquarius may also bring so that, you know, we have consciousness and that's what Aquarius is, is consciousness to make decisions about how we want to participate in the power of what it means to be our own sovereign being. Mm. Right. And, you know, I think that that's where a lot of us are. And so Pluto represents the collective. It represents what's going on under the surface, right? It is the subterranean part of our humanity. Go back to Scorpio. It's all the feelings that are floating around. And, and Pluto doesn't, isn't based on, on time incrementally. And that's why the energy now is very similar to the energy the last time Pluto was um, in Aquarius or in Capricorn. Corn, I should say. And so we're all feeling this. And I, you know, as you were saying a moment ago, Mimi, about like obesity, you know, I was thinking about both obesity and I was thinking about narcissism and how both those are both physical expressions of the tyranny of our ego. Our ego has gotten so big that, you know, is best represented by the biblical story of the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what happens in the Tower of Babel is that all of these stupid humans think that they're godlike and they build a tower so that they can reach God. Mm -hmm. right. And in that, in their folly, right, in their hubris, which is where we are now, thinking that we are so powerful, what are we doing? We are creating human life, right? We are splicing and creating goat heads out of, we're creating, like from AI, like all right. these things, we're misunderstanding our position in the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And so long as we continue to climb thinking that we are God, well, here's narcissism, here's obesity, but the great fucking fall, <laughs> yeah. we, I argue that we are in the great fall right now. Mm. When you look around, like we have all had to harden ourselves because to be empathetic beings like Pisces, it's too hard to live in this reality. Mm. It's too hard. And that's what Capricorn really amplified in all of this is that we're all striving and we're all in the hustle and we're lost in this American dream totally. that we can all be millionaires like was his name Rockwell or something of that yeah. sort, yeah. right? Yeah, Rockwell. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And so in in um, in service of that, we are pushing people out of the way to be, you just told me that a YouTubers are making millions of dollars. Right. Well, what are they doing for humanity, right? What are the influencers doing for humanity? And probably not as much as what they're doing for their pocketbooks because now what are they doing? They're representing these products as a way to say that this is what they believe in. Yep. So where are their values is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Their values may not actually be aligned with those of humanity in this great revolution, but rather they're repressed and stuck in the greed. 
right. because mm-hmm. they know no different is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's so true. And, and um, it's been interesting to, you know, some say this late stage capitalism where this is sort of like Very a good. framework that is, is deteriorating and sort of the compartments that historical capitalism maintained have lost their structure, which allows some to reach across the compartment or the stage of capitalism that says you need to uh, put your time in or you need to accumulate enough years or experience before you uh, participate in financial abundance. The the structure of capitalism, because it's oppressed those at the bottom for so long, has deteriorated these different stages such that someone at the bottom who can just think outside the box goes, well, instead of being a participant in creating a new structure for being, I'm seeing that this broken down structure gives me the ability to maybe like steal from the cookie jar a little bit. Exploit. Exploit. Exploitation. I mean, a lot of this is, is based on that. And again, we don't know any better, but we do know better now. Right. And that's, I mean, I love that you said that is the breakdown of capitalism and not just capitalism as um, a function of finance, but also as a mindset, as a way that we perceive others in a transactional way rather than a sacred way. Mm. And this Mm -hmm. is where my hope for Aquarius, it's the restoring of, you said it so beautifully in that last, um, in our last uh, episode, Aquarius is about community, right? It's about society. It's about Mm -hmm. utopia, but we are in a dystopia Mm -hmm. right now. And this dystopia nightmare is amplifying where we are all out of such extreme balance that only something as powerful as the revolutionary radical wrecking ball yeah. of um, Aquarius could actually come in and give us a chance to free ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Right. It reminds me of, you know, we've talked about so many times the biggest strength becoming, you know, coming full circle to the point where it's a, a weakness or a detriment having, you know, in this technological age, how, ha- uh, having a, a cell phone in your pocket, smartphone in your pocket, it allows you to connect with any, literally anyone in the world at any moment of the day like that. Yeah. Which is beautiful and it's great. It allows us mm-hmm. to connect with family members and friends who we we wouldn't otherwise ha- have the ability to do mm-hmm. that. But it also creates space and a filter and um, a hole to hide in um, between you and another user online. So we are engaging with one another in a way that is so spiteful and hateful that is so far from how any of us would engage if you had an interaction with someone at the bank or the grocery store. Yeah. Right. It, when, when you're face to face in person, right. When you're hiding behind an anon- anonymous screen name and or picture, uh, you can say whatever, whatever you want and right. there's no repercussions. There's no repercussions. versus in person. <laughs> you know, uh, we wouldn't be saying the things that we're saying to each other online. And it's like this two sides of the same coin. Right. And and if we did, there would be there would be emotional repercussions. Mm-hmm. And what you're what you're um, elucidating here is is how disconnected yes. we are from each other. And at, and we, it's it's here, it, we're always, whenever you find a paradox, you yeah. find the complex. Mm-hmm. And so this is the most connected we've ever been, and we are the most disconnected, yeah. right? right? This is the most, most that- connected, right? In hard air quotes. In hard, but, the, but we do feel this yeah. connection, yeah. right? And it's depersonalized. And so that's where, again, that's the scary part for coming into this Aquarius, because Aquarius, as I said to you, before is not the most emotionally personal sign. It's not so much concerned about the one-on-one as much as it is the global and the societal um, Mm -hmm. consequences. And so here, what we find and what I'm I'm hoping that this is going to usher in is more of an emphasis and a need for community. Mm -hmm. We all suffer a great deal from the wound of not belonging Mm-hmm. Right? Where do we belong? And and I believe that if we trace this back, when we came here expressing our liberation and sovereignty, we did so on the backs of, of a culture that was already established so intimately with nature. And we had to sever them from that. And in doing so, we severed ourselves from that nature mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. And so here we are with this Pluto return, having to pay for that severance from 
from others, which was really a severance from our body and it was a severance from Earth. Well, what is Aquarius concerned about? The environment. What have we been talking all about? How these, all these, is is um, environmental, are environmental issues real? Yeah, climate you know? change. Is climate change right. real? Climate deniers. Right? Yeah. And so in, in this time, like we're going, no, 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 no. But Pluto doesn't care. It's just going to show you. It's mm-hmm. not trying to prove anything to you. Instead, we're going to have weather patterns that show us the consequences of our disconnection from nature. And so mm-hmm. long as we continue to exploit everything as a user, that's what I wanted to come back to. You said we're online with others and we treat other, we use them. Yeah. We no longer relate to them yeah. and we no longer think that their well-being is part of our well-being. Right. Right. And so to reestablish that unity, to reestablish that family means that, you know, I pick up that piece of trash that's in my park because I know that other people want to enjoy the park as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I pay my taxes because I've got six billion dollars, and I know that that we we have a homeless population and right. people that can't even feed. And I pay my taxes instead of trying to avoid it. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, and that's a that's a a beautiful reminder because I think we can talk really high level about issues. Um, uh, and, and it's easy to point out issues, harder to point out solutions, mm-hmm. or when you move on to the solutions, they seem so grand that they're just completely out of reach. But oddly enough, it is like you, maybe one of the most powerful things that we can do to elicit change is the way we use our dollar. And I, I think of, for an example, even in my lifetime, the availability at the grocery store of clean foods, organic certified foods, uh, the natural section that didn't exist in the grocery no. store that I grew up in. And simply by awareness and by people demanding quality in their okay. food, we've created a billion dollar yeah. plus but, industry yeah. for better for you foods. The demand has to be there and, for and I, the market to change. Totally. And I think what you're saying, which is a beautiful representation of this ingress into Aquarius, is that before... It was the dollar, right? Mm. Money is it, money is how it, it is the way that we've been throwing around our power, and those that have more money have more power. But like every good revolution, it's the marginalized that have to rise to make those those yes. systemic long term changes. And so now here, what we're looking at when there's the demand from those that are not in power, then the system begins to change, and we're already experiencing that. Exactly, right? There's already uproar. I think it's also interesting too that the that you think about finance and how it is it, it's an established system and even that is going away. It mm-hmm. is the physical dollar may not even be worth anything right. anymore. Right. And so we're moving into I want to use your word this high level thinking. And so this is Aquarius. Remember, it's higher mind. And there will be those that will think about all these lofty solutions, these ideals to making things better, but they won't let go of the old encrusted systems that they were a part of. Hmm. And so what we're seeing here, and I think, you know, this is such a beautiful thing for, you know, for me in general, and I catch myself, I mean, I'm in this system. So I'm watching all you 30 somethings, you know, you mid 30 somethings that are just like, you're doing amazing in terms of like what you're learning and how you're sharing it with others and and how this information about spirituality this information about wellness this information about choice is coming through in in a very different way that is not built into well did you go to college right well how old are you and are you able to back that up with theory and again it's a wild wild west out there it is. but in any case like us um, that are more um, mature than you are born out of a system that believes you have to do X, Y, Z to be able to speak on this. Totally. Mm -hmm. Right? But there was great responsibility and there were rules with that. There is no responsibility and rules now. Somebody could get out there and profess that, you know, there's a 13th sign and everybody's going to jump on on it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's such a great point. You know, and, and even in like the health space, for instance, I am not trained uh, in any sort of traditional health sciences at all. Yet, we have a health business, a health show, and I've learned enough tools and tricks to honestly, and this isn't a flex, be able to navigate someone's 
overall lifestyle um, to be one towards well-being better than most MDs. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the wild world that we live in now. Mm -hmm. While that is also dangerous, because if I got into the realm of advising uh, someone how to address their cancer, that you... That would mm-hmm. completely be um, inappropriate. Uh, inappropriate. Yeah. But the way that the world is sort of like flipped upside down, that's kind of the risk you take. You either go with what you might know, which is uh, some level of subpar, in the, at least in the health space, subpar lifestyle advice that you might get through the traditional healthcare system and have to go to your favorite Instagram influencer. But shit, if you end up with a tumor, you know, you may not want to talk to the hot chick on Instagram who's showing her ass on these videos about how to address it. You need to go to the chubby, you know, white cloaked MD. Uh, And so we're in this weird time, which is like, how do we navigate? We can no longer just get what's on the menu of mainstream world and expect to be satiated. No, but again, now we're operating from that place where we have been given so much Mm -hmm. that we're overstimulated and we don't even really feel satiated anymore. Yeah, we are completely desensitized. We, our own government a couple months ago put out a bunch of information on aliens and UFOs Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And there were so many other things in the news at the time going on. And maybe that was strategic on their part. I I wouldn't doubt it. Um, But if this was happening in the seventies or the eighties, this would be front and center news on every newspaper in America across the board, this story or whatever was being put out. But, you know, we, we follow some people, we follow some podcasters that are, you know, big UFO, whatever, and it's fascinating. And so we kind of keep our eye and ear on it. And it's always kind of like interesting and fun. So, but then when we would talk about it with friends or family members, they were like, what, what was this? What? Cause we are also inundated with information. We are. And then even if we do hear the information, we are desensitized because there's too many important things. Totally. To have your your awareness on, yeah, and not only that, but and it's this overwhelming. Is, it is, and we don't, we can't trust the authorities anymore, right. and right. that's what it comes down right. to. Is we are in this complete crisis of faith as little children, because that's what we are in humanity. We're all immature little children that haven't learned how to grow into, you know, the the adult versions of ourselves, and so we are we're operating from you know this place of fear a lot of times, and and not knowing, and so how do we we grow ourselves, you know, how mm-hmm. do we hold each other accountable in a different way? And and the problem is, is that we can't throw this out, like we're a part of this system. But what we're doing is we're upgrading all of these systems in a way that that we're already questioning the authorities. We question the government, yep. we question the police, we question um, the our, our armed forces, we question everybody because we can't trust. And so now we're in this crisis going, who do we trust? Who do we trust? Well, here comes Pluto and Aquarius. Information is going to be the, the biggest currency during this time and how that information is disseminated. Because to your point, yeah, in the 70s, they were trying to get that on the news. But what did they do with that information? They hid it. Mm-hmm. They've been hiding information mm-hmm. this whole time, right? So now we know that we're being spoon fed a narrative that fits the agenda of the people in power. Mm-hmm. I am not a conspiracy theorist. And, and so even if this sounds this way, it's not that. It is, it's where we are right now. Totally. Mm-hmm. And so what do we do with it? Well, Aquarius is also asking us to be conscious like the great enlightenment, the age of Aquarius, which mm-hmm. this is not and is at the same time, is really the age of waking up. And in waking up, it might not be that we know exactly who to trust. Do we trust the YouTuber? Do we trust the Instagrammer? Do we trust that? But we have to develop a discernment totally. enough within yep. ourselves mm-hmm. to be able to trust. Mm-hmm. And so Aquarius is offering us this new liberation. Mm -hmm. A great liberation like was promised in the establishment of America. But hopefully in this, it becomes, we don't become a united states of America, but rather we become a part of the whole. Mm 
right? We are here on the earth and we're all working together. And so we're going to see political unrest because Aquarius rules politics. And we are going to see the the way that information is disseminated. There's going to be um, threats to that and changes with that. The school system is under change. Think totally. about what COVID did for us mm-hmm. too. It it brought up all the those last little pieces so that we can go, actually, we don't need to work nine to five in an right. office anymore. Yeah. Right. But now what are all the commercial real estate people going to do? Because they have all these buildings that they're, you see how we're caught in this conundrum Mm -hmm. and what Aquarius promises us as a wrecking ball is that one way or another, we're going to have to clear a path. And in the destruction of that, it means that there are things that we are going to lose in that process. Mm. And, you know, how do we prepare ourselves for this? I mean, I, I think that, well, first of all, you can't really prepare yourself for Pluto. It's coming whether you like it or not. But how do we navigate these um, these torrential changes? Number one, I think going back to community, we really need to reestablish ourselves in connection with others. Uh, Aquarius is the rebel. It's the renegade. And we need to be rebellious in our choices. Instead of going with the crowd, we mm-hmm. go against the crowd and not simply just to be rebellious before a cause. Remember, we talked about Aquarius is about the causes, the things that matter most to the utopian ideal of what it means. And so here we need to also support causes. We are probably not going to eradicate systemic racism, right? But we need to become a part of the dialogue, all of us. That needs to radically change from it being about the perpetrator and the victim. And it's a really controversial topic because all of us are white presenting here. If us three white presenting people want to say to somebody that, you know, is not white, well, like, let's talk about that racism. We're all just people and we're all just souls evolving. But the thing is, is there's truth to that. right? And in to say that, that is to offend so deeply because that wound is entrenched in all of us. Mm -hmm. And in the same way that I said that Pisces, unfortunately, you know, is the sacrificial goat of the Zodiac, many of, uh, in throughout humanity, cultures have also been that. Mm -hmm. The Jews we saw that with, you know, the African-American slaves, like it is part of what it means to be here. Mm -hmm. And what has been front and center are the greedy mothers motherfuckers, right? right? The oppressors. <laughs> mm-hmm. And now what Aquarius is saying is let's create a bridge rather than making it all about the victims and that we need to redeem this and all about, you know, the patriarchy. We have to find a bridge and we have to learn how to cooperate and collaborate and get along. Yeah. And we have to find the, the knowledge and the information that is, that is really pure and beneficial. And we have to blend it with what is alternative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And so this yeah. whole idea of alternative um, healing, alternative lifestyles we we can stop saying alternative it's no longer alternative right point it's integrated yes and so now we go this is me this is a part gender roles you know do we call it a they do we call it a that that like none of that it's it's been coming up in our collective because we want so badly to exist in a continuum right we want so badly to not be identified in a box Totally. Mm-hmm. totally. But to do so, look at what's happened here. You know, right. if somebody wants to call themselves a they and they live like in Louisiana and they're going to church, they are going to endure what? Oh. Uh, a heavy persecution. Exactly. And all of those that find themselves in these positions of persecution, many of them which are carrying collective wounds from, from their ancestors, but those of us that are immediately in the view of persecution, this is the revolution. And so not only do they rise, but we that are not so persecuted, we need to grab them arm in arm and help them. Totally. We need to help others. Yeah. And our own... Um, our own success and our own survival is dependent upon us feeding the systems, helping the earth restore itself, helping other people restore themselves. And if we don't, if we miss that call in the next 19 years and we move into Pisces and in, in Pluto, P- Pluto in Pisces, oh my goodness. I think we'll be like the we'll be Atlantis at that point <laughs> under the ocean and we're all gone. Wow. Because <laughs> that would be in another 19 years 19. in, in, in wow. 2043. Damn. I was hoping wow. that was outside of my lifetime. <laughs> no, you're saying that it could be really good. It could be really good. Yeah. Sure. 
Sure. Yeah. But um, but again, how do we, how we yes, move through this? Yes. Or this how do yeah. we wake up and take responsibility for ourselves individually and how it has contributed to the whole? Yeah. Our response to segregation has been segregation, which yep. is interesting. Very good. Um we've said you've oppressed me and I'm the victim. Well, you're just continuing to segregate into groups of victims and oppressors instead of and avoiding and completely skipping the fix, which would be this happy medium of, of well, some sort. The right? happy medium. And in this case too, because it is Aquarius, it is about, it's about commun- communication, community, communing, right? We get yep. this calm, calm, calm. So again, moving back into, you know, we're not going to, um, we're not going to solve racism, but can we be uncomfortable enough to just listen? Mm -hmm. Can we enter into, you know, a a conversation about it on both ends? Sure. And if we could have extremes come together in a way that is open to hearing, like what you said, your brother, you know, well, that's an interesting thing. Let me think about that. Oh, my God, we would make so much momentum. Well, even uh, that's that's one step in the process of discernment, Mm -hmm. which is to say, I'm going to listen and then I'm going to discern and politely thank you. I'm going to be discerning that information now yeah um and and that's something that's completely skipped because we're triggered into a response that's Mm -hmm. that that's either zero or a hundred yeah a hundred percent yes i'm on your team and now i'm uh, adopting every bit of uh this platform as my own identity or fuck you i'm the opposite i don't agree with anything you have to say we have nothing in common and you're the problem right and um we need to normalize the attitude of you know, I don't really have an opinion on that le- on that yet. Let me gather more information and put together a well thought out cluster of ideas. Uh, you know, we go ahead. Yeah. No, no, you. No, I, want, I, was, I was I was quiet. I didn't oh. want you to to chime no, in yet because no, I'm not. that's that's it. That's yeah. perfect. You you summarized what it is. Like it, we need to normalize ourselves saying, I don't know. I don't have an, yeah. No, I don't, I don't every, have an opinion. Everybody's got an opinion like an asshole. Yep. But what do you know? Right. And if you don't know, don't speak on it. Right. Well, that's right. what I mean is Would like you be people willing to who. to put money on that opinion? Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, or do you really believe that? Right. Or are you spouting something that you have been conditioned? <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and then here's the critical side. Can you develop a well thought out personal not just opinion, but connection to what you believe. Mm -hmm. Because the connection to what you believe is the emotional punctuation so that when something comes out of your mouth, there's alignment with you. Mm -hmm. It's it's a balance between logic, rationale, and emotion, and um, belief, conviction, Mm -hmm. kind of blending into two. But that takes time. Yes. And And it takes collaboration. We're living in an instant gratification world. Totally. And we need to get back to like the pause, the sacred pause Mm -hmm. of just like, let me think about that. Let me take some time to develop my thoughts around this rather than just jumping, you know, headfirst into a new, um, a new Facebook group to (laughs) fight others, you know? Well, and, and even if after your discernment process results in an opinion that might differ from somebody else, why can't we coexist with those differences what is a community if everybody agrees with each other yeah i would argue that if everybody agrees with each other it will ultimately turn into like an autoimmune condition and self-destruct because progress is built off of the sharpening of differing opinions and personalities and what makes a community is a a a progressive diverse um Open-minded. Open-minded set of individuals uh, that can actually make something despite the differences into more than it would be should they be separate So parts. good. You're doing amazing. Great. And it's like this, if they could all have the same goal, which is the, the benefit of the whole. Mm-hmm. And if we could all benefit the whole and come at it with our different unique points of view, then we would all be living in symphony because a symphony is made up of how many different instruments, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. right? Many. All of which are really important. But right now it's just that big drum. Mm-hmm. And what is more rebellious in our choices, as I wrote down as we were speaking, 
at, at this current time than to unite with people who are wildly different than we are and choose to coexist. Yep. Like that is actually rebellious in this current time where people are only associating with others who adopt the yeah. same shit that they believe. Reinforce their own belief yeah. system. Yeah, echo chamber. Yep. And that's, that's, and, but the thing is, is, and this is what Pluto's asking us, we all have to look at, it's not are we or aren't we, how much are we? Totally. So we are all conditioned in this way. And the deprogramming that is promised, we'll say in Aquarius, you know, it it also requires though that in place of that, that we build up something that is relevant, right? Relevant to the time. We don't want to get too high in our ideals right. and, you know, talk about the utopian world that could exist if patriarchy didn't exist anymore. That's bullshit. Like right now, we have to stop pointing the finger at systems, calling it the things and start looking in the mirror and going, how do I want to dismantle myself from, how do I free myself from my own conditioning? Mm -hmm. Love that. Mm. Right. And that is the promise of freedom in Aquarius. Mm. So takeaways for this, this conversation, you know, we're, we want this to be tangible and practical for the listener to be able to take these concepts into their life moving forward and contribute to the more beautiful world that we're talking about, the more balanced world. Um, so we talked about being a part of the solution in the way of moving towards community, but a diverse arrangement of community it doesn't yeah. have to be just a community of people that are you know function as an echo chamber well for you but let's but let's come back a little bit on that because what if that group of people are the ones that you know want to dismantle child trafficking mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we want these clusters yeah these groups these communities that are willing to speak up Mm -hmm. And and we want to assign ourselves to what whatever our heart feels. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you're a, a child and a survivor of incest or any kind of a sexual trauma, then it may be a part of your cause to transmute that wound to join something that is systematically trying to help a cause. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is where we start talking about transmuting our own pain. And so I'm going to do this. I, I I'm going to bring this into the personal now. So we talked about it at a macrocosmic level and it, this is the collective level mm -hmm. but how do we now integrate and how do we become better citizens of the world with this information first i want to say that pluto going into aquarius affects aquarius first and foremost any other sign that is a fixed sign you can go back and listen to the other episodes and you can remember what the fixed signs are there's your homework but every fixed sign is going to be impacted by pluto and aquarius although Aquarius the most impacted. Pluto moves at a degree of about one to two degrees a year. So it's very slow. So everybody that's born, you know, January 21st, 22nd, 23rd, they are smack in the middle of this transformation and death. So on a personal level, they are personally dismantling their own ego or, you know, the life will do it for them. And they are under a pressure of such transformation that let me make sure everybody hears this, that not everybody will go through in their lifetime. Hmm. I mean, we're living mm -hmm. through Pluto and Aquarius. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be living through Pluto and Leo. We'll be dead. Right. Mm. Right. So Leos will never experience in this lifetime Pluto. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So Aquarians think about that too. Like they are the ones that we want. We, they, they're the humanitarians. So they are under this enormous pressure right now to align their own inner life with the outer life as mm -hmm. well. Now, equally so, everybody has Aquarius in their chart, even if they're not Aquarius. So this is where if you know your date, I mean, if you know your time of birth, you know what your ascendant or rising sign is, which means that you can determine which house is illuminated by Aquarius. So uh, as an example, Mimi is going to look at her chart and she's going to look for where is Aquarius on the cusp, on the outer ring mm -hmm. of that clock? Yeah, it's between houses 10 and 11. Okay. Let me see. No. Oh. It, it's 11. It is the house 11. Right? 11, it's, okay. She's learning. So for you, Aquarius is going to be... Um, 
traveling through your 11th house. And so that area of life, and I'm going to make it just a little bit more complicated for those of you that can follow along. We're looking at the degrees. And so Pluto is currently at about one degree of Aquarius. It'll move into two. If you go to a horoscope, you're looking for where that one to two degrees of Aquarius is. And so for the sake of simplicity, we're going to say that for Mimi, hers is her 11th house. And so Pluto is is traveling through that 11th house, meaning that this area is going to be the area of primary focus for your soul's evolution, um, the area in which you are transforming your raw material, who you are, into what you're doing here in the world. And it means that you're going to have conflict in that area of life. So the 11th house is, I also want to say the 11th house is natally Aquarius, but it's the, it's the place of groups, organizations, um, love received from others, accolades, and the part of you that is such an intricate part of society, the f- that weaving piece of it. This is where you're going to do the bulk of your work and where you're going to feel the most pressure as well. Hmm. It also will indicate that this will be the area of life in which you're going to undergo many tiny deaths. Wherever Pluto is, you experience these tiny deaths. Pluto's been in my seventh house. It's the house of relationships. I experienced an enormous death. Right. And I'm not suggesting that everybody's going to have a, a physical death, although it is strongly included because Pluto does take many, many years to go through that house. Um, but it does mean that this is the area that you you don't want to hold on to too much. Hmm. You know, this is the area that you want to be open to being torn to pieces so mm-hmm. as to be remade every morning. Morning mm-hmm. in the sunlight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I'm trying. I'm just reflecting on what has been in my life and and just how how I can kind of absorb that uh, moving forward. So, if you had to, if you had to quantify or or qualify rather, the the eleventh house is is what again just uh so i'm Mm -hmm. it's the house yep it's the house of our connections our community our groups it's also the house of our hopes and dreams and it's it's also the house of our money or accolades received from our contribution or our work okay in the world and so you're you you technically been in the 10th house which is work Mm -hmm. yeah okay okay yeah that's that's uh that's helpful for me and chase is i think mine yeah your yours is your your rising yep. so that would be your first, first house, house right yeah it would be his first house but this is a great um example of your your aquarius starts at 29 degrees just it's it's literally a cusp okay so technically your pluto is in the 12th house and will remain in that 12th house for many many years okay And that 12th house is the house of the collective. You know, it is the house of undoing. It is, it's the house that the area of life that represents our connection to all of it. Mm. But it is, it's also the, it's the house, it's Pisces. So there's, it's an ambiguous placement. And so for you, this is, this next chapter of your life, you're leading from a place of trust. And I just had an uh, an insight. You remember we were talking about your dad in one of the episodes and how your dad didn't have have, you know, formal training and this and that, and yet right. he trusted his intuition totally. and, and he made it yep. and he made it and you want nothing more than to make it totally. as well, but you've gone your own route, which was go to school, do the things, do the things. And so in, in trusting, over trusting that maybe you have under trusted just the flow of life. Mm. And so Pluto in the 12th house is like, you might think you're in control and you have plans, but fate is really at hand. Mm. So it loops you back to the, the karma of your father as well beautiful Mm. very good so yes pluto is a very important some would argue the most important factor in a horoscope and and so beyond it being in a certain house what it also does is it's an aspect to other planets that's more advanced and if you would like to you know have an analysis of your chart so that you might better understand how to support yourself in your own spiritual evolution then i would suggest having a a reading with a professional astrologer that can you know Mm -hmm. describe these these forces and energies in a way that you feel like you can navigate yeah because it's it's 
high Definitely. if you write it's it's a lot to take in yeah Definitely absolutely is. there's so much to it there's so many layers that yeah it's fun to kind of pick apart and look at your look at your chart and then read a book or listen to a podcast but um it that's nothing compared to you know the working alongside or with someone that's been doing this for many many years um yeah, I, I hope this is is really helpful for for the listener to to look at where Aquarius is at in your chart, which house, what that chart or what that house represents in your own life. Yep, we can all do that, of course. Um, I want to bring it back to the listener for just a minute. Um, what else from our discussion today, as we're rounding third and and um, tying this in a nice bow, mm-hmm. taking this information into the world? How do we how do we take this from here and and do better with this information? I think it's that last sentence that you just said. Do better with your information. Yeah. Like, yep. you know, be accountable to someone. It's, you know, the the discernment of what we what we say has so much power. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we you know, think about we are the conditioned children of what was in power before us. I think you know, oftentimes like we learn in kindergarten how to pledge allegiance oh to the United <laughs> States of America. I know. <laughs> we are being indoctrinated from the first moment before yeah. we even form our own thoughts. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what I'm saying is that there are many of these indoctrinations along the way. And I love that analogy of the lake turning over. Yeah. You know, it has to come up so that it may be crystal clear again. Mm-hmm. And so this is a great period of purging what knowledge is no longer useful, is outdated, or is um um, it's threatening, mm-hmm. right? It's not helpful. It's hindering. And that's one of the things too, if you think about it, we want to, m- many people profit off learning the things that will hurt another, mm-hmm. right? Debunking things. And so instead, if we could be better with our knowledge and want to help the system, the whole with it, then again, the momentum that we would build would be a wrecking ball. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. agree. That's, um, that's tangible. It really is. And I, we, we can start by just challenging where we subscribed to something out of conditioning um, and evaluate whether that's serving us or serving where we're going. Seek out community, I think, is another yep. theme. Seek out community and and care, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. care. Rather than, you know, scrolling through Instagram or watching TV, like, go pick up the fucking trash, please. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Seriously. Like, it, seriously. It, it, Bring a bag enough, with like, you on your walk and pick it up. It's and- weirdly those things that add, you know, one penny to the compounding self-interest jar totally. of your life. And you already you already established that we're operating out of scarcity. We're operating out of poverty. And it's not because we don't have enough. It's because we have too much and yep. we're mm-hmm. fat and we're narcissistic. Yep. And we need to start tightening up instead. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. For sure. Discernment. That's a big highlight from, from the conversation today. Um, rebellion in our choices yes. for a cause. And I, and I love that. Um, when I left Christianity... I couldn't help but notice my tendency to want to, um, I think it's called transference, where you're looking towards another leader, charismatic leader, mm-hmm. you know, not unlike the pastor mm-hmm. or you know the hierophant of the new. Um, it, what for me looked like stoicism and then some version of scientific materialism and then you know through the host of different spiritual um, modalities out there i i wanted an authority you're looking for an authority we all are because we're all children and we need that authority first right and i'm so proud of you that you pulled the hierophant back into that because that's what it is and we first seek that spiritual authority outside of ourselves as children Mm -hmm. until we become that spiritual authority which is the embodiment of our wisdom yeah Mm. yeah Boom. Walk, walk your talk. And Boom. we're bringing this full circle because way back in episode one, we pulled the Hierophant card. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, <sighs> anything else? I think we've beautifully zoomed mm-hmm. out and mm-hmm. also zoomed back in. Um, and uh, what a what a journey on these four episodes. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a good place to end is just to, to inform the people who are listening, who have been on this, this four part series journey with us. Um, there's definitely going to be some that want to work with you in mm-hmm. some capacity. So if you could sort of just, we'll take a couple minutes to, to, if you could speak to your offerings mm-hmm. and, and how you, uh, the different ways that you work with people. Sure. Uh, My offerings have transformed uh, in this last year as I'm transforming. And so astrology is always going to be my passion. Um, How I use astrology is what will change over time. But I am still seeing people one on one. I love to work with um, with clients in that way, using their chart. However, what's different now is that where I was trained before by my mentor, <clears throat> Keith, it was not to speak the jargon. It was to only give the information that was pertinent. But this, the jargon, so to speak, the archetypal language is imbued with animism. It's imbued with poetry. Mm-hmm. It's imbued with a felt sense. And so now when I work with people, I give them the language of astrology. I don't want them to be, you know, prostrating themselves like we saw in, you know, the Hierophant card, but rather collaborating. If you know you're a Gemini and I teach you about this Gemini, then you have um, a container. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching people about their charts while they're, you know, hearing about themselves. Um, The other way that I'm working with people, uh, I'm doing more personalized alchemy work with people. So it's I moving away from the paradigm of fixing and being a therapist. I no longer want to participate in the negative story of your life. I'm I'm there. I want to acknowledge it. But what I want to do is I want to participate in the betterment of Mm -hmm. your life, in the wholeness of your life. And so what that looks like is not positive, it's not negative, or what do I want to say, toxic positivity, but rather it's reclaiming your wholeness. And in reclaiming your wholeness, there is more joy in living. Because even the joy of being an asshole and calling yourself out on that is like, okay, well, I was an asshole and I'm not anymore. So just giving people, um, giving people an experience in which they can come home to themselves. Mm-hmm. I'm teaching astrology. I'll be doing a, um, a workshop for people that want to learn just enough st- astrology to um, aid their clientele. So this is for, this is for therapists. This is for people that are working um, in some sort of a healing or guiding capacity. For people that are facilitating um, journeys, astrology is also a really effective tool. Uh, And then I am also leading advanced study groups. So if any of you are already astrologers in the making and would like to advance your studies, I'm offering that as well. Amazing. And and we'll have links to your website and um, everything in the show notes. But if somebody is interested in one of these things, what's the best way for them to reach you? The best way is probably to email me, which you'll give them that email. Um, you can you can DM me. I'm on social media and Instagram, um, and I'll get back to you. I just can't promise that it'll be fast. <laughs> yeah, so email yeah. is preferred. Email is probably yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah, we'll have all of that information in the show notes. And also just want to offer to your listeners, as you're listening to this, if you want help with it, um, you can DM me a picture of your chart. I'm not going to go looking for it for you. You can um, DM me a picture of your chart and ask any questions you want. Because if I have that in front of me, I'm happy to give you some guidance Mm. on that. Mm. Beautiful. And what's a good resource um, for people to, what's a good website for them to go find their chart? Um, Oh, geez. There's, I mean, the... There's probably quite a few. Yeah. T- I mean, my favorite is, ta- is Time Passages. Um, okay. I think it's an app. I don't like all the messiness that are on like Astro data banks and things like that. Okay. So Time Passages? Yeah. I think, I mean, I think that your listeners are probably more advanced than I am at searching the web. So <laughs> <laughs> I was keeping it old school. Um, but in, but one of the places that they can go, I offer online classes in basic astrology, beginner's astrology. So if you go to my website, you can you can actually learn this through um, two, guided videos that will teach you the planets, the signs, the houses, mm. and what we talked about today. Yeah. Awesome. I want to double click on what you said. I no longer participate in the negativity of your life. <laughs> and uh, that is, what's the opposite of a red flag? Uh, white? No, 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 it would I be don't know, blue flag. Uh, an invitation. <laughs> that like- should be an invitation when evaluating teachers. Mm-hmm. We yeah. are in a climate of I'm trying to think of my words carefully, but even in the therapy space, 
mm-hmm. we're in a climate of pseudo quote unquote work or self improvement. Yeah. And I think this is actually the pre work. Name it to tame it is has its value. Mm-hmm. But if you don't actually move into integration mm-hmm. or some level of improvement, is that even work? Well, it's not even that it's not work. It's not, it's not, you're not capable. Of right. It, right. Because, and that's what, again, this Aquarius is, it's about reprogramming at a cellular level. Yeah. And so the alchemy that I'm doing is, is helping people not, not reprogram. That's your job. But if you can get there, I can help you integrate this and sustain this as your yep. new frequency. Yep. And so I want to participate in, you know, high vibrational frequencies that, that are born out of those lower states, but they need need to be transmuted through the maturity of self. Yep, absolutely. And and we are a testament to that. Uh, we've been working with you since 2019, I think, which mm-hmm. is just amazing. And uh, with every layer, there is something more profound. Um, even two weeks ago, uh, and, and what's happened in the last two weeks feels so additive. And uh, it feels so much more tangible to work with than when it was buried deep beneath my programming, mm-hmm. if you will. So um, cannot encourage people to at least get the analysis done if you are interested in having a teacher who is more willing to participate in the positivity of your life. Um, highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, this was so fun and I'm kind of sad that it's over. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for being here and this is just a joy and a treasure and... and um, I'm just so grateful for you. I've said it so many times. Yeah. Yeah. I'll receive it as many times as you're, <laughs> as you're offering it. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Thank you. You know, I love this so much and I so appreciate doing this together because we get, we're building something here yeah. mm-hmm. and there's something in the synergy that is an energy. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is why your listeners love you because there's so much synergy that they feel a part of. Mm. And so I feel a part of this and you feel a part of me. And so we're creating that kind of community. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You are absolutely a part of this. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us and tuning in. Send this to someone you love, someone you know, um, and let's let's be a part of the the solution and the the building of the more beautiful world that our hearts and higher consciousness know is possible. We'll talk to you next time. Go spread some light. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed that, check out right over here for some more fun clips. Oh, and you're going to want to subscribe. Bye.